3 листопада. It's November 3rd. Ukraine Media Center Ukraine Forum continues its operation. My name is Svetlana Chaparenka and now we will be talking about the current situation in the south of Ukraine. Joining us online is Natalia Humanyuk, head of the United Coordinating Press Center of the Security and Defense Forces of the south of Ukraine. Good afternoon, Miss Natalia. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Miss Natalia, what is the situation within the last day? What are the consequences of the latest enemy strike? Well, it was a complicated 24 hours, but comparing to the rest, its characteristic feature is that during the night the enemy did not use guided aviation bombs in the area of our responsibility. Meanwhile, there was intense drone strike during which the enemy was using cruise missiles, air-to-air -air cruise missiles in our area of responsibility. It looked like a drone strikes with the use of Shahed 131-136 drones. Air Defense Forces in our area of responsibility were working for five hours straight because the geography of Downing is characteristic to a very branched network of drones. Roads, three drones were destroyed in Kropivnitsky region, one in Mykolaiv region, one in Dnipro Dnipropetrovsk, Vinnytsia and Kherson regions, and three in Odessa region. Unfortunately, we could not avoid strikes, but the strike was inflicted on the technical facility in Odessa region. The attack was involving a number of groups of drugs and during this strike the enemy launched an air-to-air X-59 missile in the direction of Kropivnitsky region, but the missile was destroyed by air defense forces. Previously we were observing the targeted strikes which were looking like a reconnaissance of our air defense forces positions. Now the number of drones significantly increased. Is it safe to say that the enemy is going to increase the number of means engaged in such strikes? Well, we cannot exclude any options. We understand that as the situation develops, including the change of the weather conditions, the cold period coming, the enemy may resort to more massive attacks and and previously we were assessing those as targeted attacks we were warning that those were the reconnaissance strikes because two to four drones launched in the area of responsibility most likely were intended to do the reconnaissance of the air defense forces but if we analyze the situation in full before the night at strike the enemy used supersonic Onyx missiles launched from the temporarily occupied territory of Crimea using the Bastion rocket system. They lost their battle capability, but they were targeting the Odessa region as well with a focus on the area along the shoreline. We understand it's a counter ship missile, so it makes no sense using them on the ground targets. Miss Natalia, what about the sea humanitarian corridor? One week ago there was an information that Ukraine suspended its operation due to the threats of strikes by Russian Federation. Well, such information was injected from incompetent sources. We were trying to debunk it. Any suspension in operation of such corridor is impossible because it operates based on the assessment of the security situation, the security and defense forces offered, given the compliance with the security conditions, to have the corridor operating within which the vessels of different owners and with different cargos, not only the grain, can operate if the security situation allows to do so, and security and defense forces would be capable of ensuring the safe passage of the vessels. More than 60 vessels have already used this corridor. They've transported an incredible amount of cargo, which was reported by the Ministry of Infrastructure, and we continue ensuring the security component. But yes, the enemy continues exercising pressure. They continue 
to intensify the operations of the tactical aviation to impede the operation of the corridor, but their efforts are so far of a demonstrative nature. We are capable of coping with them, and regardless of the facts of the enemy dropping unidentified explosive devices into the water to discriminate, to discredit, and disrupt the operation of such corridor. Still, the security and defense forces ensure its safe operations and the vessel owners trust to the security and defense forces. So what is the pace of the operation of the ships? Are more ships coming in or leaving the ports? Well, the operations are equalized. It's the equal number of vessels both entering and leaving the, por the ports. It depends on the security conditions, weather conditions and general economic situation when the cargo is ready, when the vessels are ready, and the vessel owners are ready. Well, so what is the situation with the enemy vessels in the Black Sea Basin? Is the weather on our side? Well, the group of ships stays in the region that they identified for themselves as safe from the southern shore of Crimea to Novorossiysk. They have created the observation area over there before the passage of the Kerch Strait. And they focus about 30 to 40 civil vessels to ensure a buffer zone to cover themselves from possible drone at strikes against their battleships. Five to six enemy ships are on duty. Usually they are petrol cutters of the bodyguard service, but the weather is now unfavorable. The storm is going on for a couple of days now. And there are no missile carriers on duty in the Black Sea Basin. Big battleship are in the safe area, but the general stopped at assesses the threat level as high because they can even use the missile carriers from the base. So about the situation in Kherson region, can we say something about the success of the security and defense forces in that area? And what is the situation of there in general? Our main success is the destruction of enemy potential, enemy potential, minus 18 large caliber artillery systems, minus two MLRS systems, minus two ta tanks, minus one APC, and 14 automobiles, minus two ships, and minus 32 occupiers is a good result within the last 24 hours. We continue destroying their capacity using counter battery and other methods of work and we urge everybody to hear us and to comply with the regime of information silence in order not to do harm to the civilians who end up in the occupied areas because the enemy has their revenge on them and also they try to imitate the stuff of the security and defense forces using, using the attacks against the West Bank. I want to give the floor to the journalists so they ask their questions. Miss Natalia, good afternoon. Nadia Shinkrenko, Ukraine Forum. Recently, in his article in Economist, Valery Zaluzhny stated that it's impossible to win this war using ob obsolete methods. So, my question is as follows What are the types of weapons required by the security and defense forces in your area of, of responsibility to gain advantage and in future to? win the war. Thank you for your question. Very good one. Given the specifics of the front line that goes along the river of Dnipro and specifics of our area of responsibility, we're talking about the need in long-range high-precision weapons because the enemy is hiding before be behind our civil population and we shouldn't do any harm to them. We try to only strike the enemy positions, so the more we have of those long-range high-precision weapons, the more efficient is our job. And the main bow of ours is currently the guided aviation bombs 
It makes no sense destroying them. We should rather destroy those who launch them. So counter rocket artillery, so launch range counter rocket artillery is the main thing we need. Thank you very much, Miss Natalia. I'm reminding you we were discussing the current situation in the south of Ukraine. Joining us online was Natalia Komenyuk, the head of the United Coordinating Press Center of the Security and Defense Forces of the south of Ukraine. Ukraine Media Center will continue its operation on Monday. We're putting together the schedule for the next week. Stay tuned.